you're just hanging out with us, just tuning in, uh, we're talking about the new Feywild Unearth Arcana. And uh, we're, we're talking about all folk. Uh, the, the, they've been ramping up the bird people over the past few years, y'all. Uh, uh, we got Kenku, um, uh, we, we got bird folk. Now specifically, uh, we have owl folk, which, um, you know, on one hand, when I saw it, I was kind of like, I mean, can't a bird folk just be an owl folk? But I, I think owls get so tied mytholo uh, uh, mythologically to uh, places like the Feywild, across pop culture, you know, across, um, uh, you know, uh, different, you know, human customs and civilizations and stuff like that. Owls are so tied in to, uh, uh, to these kinds of weird worlds that I, I do think they sort of deserve you know, their own sort of offshoot from just uh, normal like bird folk characters. This is the most underwhelming of all the new ones though. It's like, you can fly and see in the dark. Isn't that cool? Like, Bro. I mean, like, yeah. And you get the detect magic ritual that other things also have. And Literally. you can also take a, there's a feat that does it. You can also just get it as a spell and cast it as a ritual. Yeah. There's definitely some stuff here that it's just like, I love owl folk, but also can I get, can I get something cool? Yeah, they need like a, like a super sweet pounce or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where like it's like the an ambush attack. Their or own yeah. Cell pellets. Yeah. Uh, you know, something like that. I rotate think, their uh, head all the way yeah, around. Three, I like wish there was, perception, yeah. you know? Yeah. I wish there was really a good. head rotation ability, some kind oh, of vision. Cool. They mm -hmm. can they can get extended vision if they wrote take take a bonus action to rotate their head or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, you can do it for flavor, but there's something very satisfying about uh, a 360 uh, neck mechanic. Yeah. Well, it's it's the it's the that what that reads that that's not different than an Aarakocra or a Kinku. Not really. I mean, it's like slightly different, but you're like, I mean, I guess you know, like <laughs> versus these other ones where you're like, here's this really unique thing. Also, there's a bird person that's an owl. Also, look at these other unique things, you know, like that one. If the hobgoblin is overpowered, I think the owl's definitely underpowered, personally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, in my head, it, it, I mean, it could definitely do, use some some upscaling. Because I think for me, for owls, it, the idea of owls and owl-like creatures in a, in a Feywild, I, you know, uh, I go very, like, uh, Miyazaki, this is a dangerous uh, figure that I don't want to be encountering. You know, I go to the um, oh, what's what the avatar? Uh, the like, avatar, the, yeah, the, 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 the librarian yeah. in, uh, in 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 the in the library in uh, in book two of Avatar. Yeah, who, like, who's like humans? No, like I don't trust you. I don't want you here. It's kind of like a protector of this ancient way, this ancient knowledge. Mm -hmm. I will say that the owl folk race leads to some interesting possibilities in games where say you're all playing owl folk and you come into contact with owl bears say you're playing like <laughs> rhyme of the frost maiden and the the, the main villain aural the demigoddess she has an owl form you know lots of owl creatures are in D D. how will your owl folk react uh, are, are they distant cousins is there some kind of lineage there that we can Stick work with into the story <laughs> it's interesting yeah. stuff but maybe not you know uh, I, I feel like I should point out because uh, so uh, Lauren Urban, Obo Lauren, our favorite, um, she is, loves the bird people. It's one of her favorite things. And, and, you know, she's pointing out here for us in chat that these are actually so good and we are all wrong because they can fly without heavy armor issues. They have a mechanic to save from falling and they've got dark vision. So... Thanks, Lauren. Can, I can also cast the fly spell and have all of that. <laughs> so, of all the of all the unearthed arcana, uh, uh, we've 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 come to a to a dividing line on folk. Um, didn't see it coming. If you give me but, good lore, I can get behind Alpha. <laughs> no, they're not. I'm, yeah, I, 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 that's not... what I think I want too. I want a little bit more. Like, I feel like it's so huge with the hobgoblin. Like, that's yeah. wow, so cool. The lore is so cool, and the owls are like. They're they tied to magic. Here's an owl. Yeah, I'm not well, I'm not anti owl folk. I just want I want them to I want them to be more unique. Everything about them something else already does and arguably does better. So that's what I'm like. That. They need they just need a something. I get I, I get that. And you know sometimes yeah. I, I, sometimes I'm all about flavor, right? Like I remember when like uh, uh, the Minotaur first dropped, people were like, I mean, this is a dwarf, but you're calling it a Minotaur in in a lot of ways. And you know it's kind of at the time, I was like, "Yeah, I see that," but I get to be a Minotaur. That's that's cool. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, a couple more just things on the page of what uh, what make Alfred special uh, could be cool. 
that said, I think it's time for the main event, my friends. Pounce. They they need a pounce. Like one once per long or short rest, they essentially have a guaranteed sneak attack or something. Yeah. Like they're just like one time you just wreck somebody. Yeah, some <laughs> kind of some kind of sonar mm-hmm. uh, uh, ability. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I'd be I'd be very into it. Uh, uh, but that said, uh, let's let's leave the owls behind us. We're here to talk about rabbit people. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm very all my training has led to this. Situation. Yeah, all our training has led to this. B Dave, why are you so excited about these rabbit folk? Why am I not excited about the rabbit folk? I mean, they, they again, they've got a, a bunch of lucky things, but I just even just hair trigger, hair trigger, hair you trigger, know. Uh, but proficiency to initiative is huge. Like every character I've got, I stack initiative, especially if you're a, a buffer, or a debuffer, like a battlefield controller. Like I mm-hmm. it, never underestimate the value of going first. And they just have it. That alone is worth this being a playable class. And then like all the other stuff is like great as well, you know, to, to me, but it's, it's super nice. Super, super nice. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm into this. Uh, Jeremy, why, uh, why is uh, rabbit folk the best part of this on earth arcana wave? Uh, and if you don't think that uh, explain why you're wrong and apologize. So when I first read the rabbit folk section, I was reminded of Watership Down, which, <laughs> which you know, for those that don't know, it's based on a book, but it is also the most violent children's movie I've ever yeah. seen about rabbit warfare. Rabbits yeah. in burrows fighting other rabbits. I believe it came out in, it might have come out in the late 70s, early 80s. I'm not sure, but look up a Watership Down cartoon on YouTube and just... Don't. Uh, or, or don't because it, it is it is it's secretly a horror movie in disguise and there was an old role-playing game that came out in the mid-70s called bunnies and burrows that was an rpg version of watership down type battles what yeah and with this official inclusion of rabbit folk into D I like it because I want to. I want to create that watership down feel. I want to make bunny armies fighting against each other, uh, using their reaction with lucky footwork, um, just hopping all over the place. My my vision of rabbit folk is probably very sadistic, and and I, I am imagining once again Redwall actually is, is is perhaps a more mainstream version of what I'm talking about, which we talked about the last time I was on stream. Redwall, just bunnies fighting against each other. Um, I I have that image in my head, and I can't get it out, and so that's why I dig rabbit folk. Thanks, I hate it. And I'm I'm afraid of threshing machines to this day because oh, of freaking no. Watership Down. Yeah. Like uh. Watership Down's a trip. Uh, yeah, no, I, I too am, am driven purely by my uh, my love of uh, rabbits throughout uh, throughout pop culture. Uh, I, I mean, you know, from the actual fantasy side, I, I, I like Fran from Final Fantasy XII. I like the idea of just all these like nine foot tall uh, hot male and female and otherwise rabbits that are uh you know just just fierce and blue stealing at all times very into that um uh my favorite rabbit is judy hops i don't know if it's problematic that i i i I like her because she's uh she's far too young or because she's a cop or because she's a different species than me take your pick but judy hops tops over here uh lola bunny come on yeah lola bunny big bunnies are great Uh, I mean, I just want to talk about the lore um, about it, I guess. Instead. Oh, yeah, we got to talk about, yeah, let's hang on. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm just, uh, you know, I love, I do love rabbit folk, maybe not quite as much as Joe, um, but I do like, and I do like how it's tied to the idea of the lucky rabbit. So you get the idea of luck with Faye, which is, again, another big folklore thing. And so when I first just looked mm-hmm. at a list of things that were in this rabbit folk, I was like, oh, okay, interesting. Like I do get it, but I want to know more. And I think that that's actually a really exciting thing. And as well, uh, after fairies, this is the one that everybody that I've run games for is like, can I be a rabbit person? So um, they're going to be really happy about this whole UA. <laughs> it's wild to me too, that they leaned into the luck so heavily with the rabbits and you know the getting in places you're not supposed to be with the fairies and the teamwork with the with the hobgoblins and didn't do wisdom at all with the owls yeah like you know that they were like that was the bridge too far you know what i mean like the wise owl Pfft, no lucky rabbit though yes lucky rabbit you know? yeah uh, i love the i love uh, the the rabbit hop 
Um, once per each of your turns, uh, when you walk at least five feet, you can hop, rolling a D12 and moving that many feet, additional feet in the direction of your choice. Uh, that extra distance so, doesn't cost movement. Uh, I'm very, yeah. very into that. Yeah, that's cool. Even just the idea, A, it's, you know, it's useful in just closing that little bit of distance and B, just for flavor. Like, absolutely, but also, a, yeah, I'm rabbit. Most I'm rabbit grids kicking. are like five foot squares. So I'm just like wondering when you roll it, I, I feel like I kind of want guidance in this rule of, of rounding with it. Like if you get a two, does that mean you don't get to hop? Because you got five foot squares. Well, it seems to me that- I think you, um, it, Yeah, I think you can, because it's the, the grids are optional in, in fifth edition. Like Yeah, they, totally. Yeah. I just feel yeah. like most, you know, it's also, used you, you very could, commonly. And so I, I want to just, I want it to just go in increments of five. I mean, that's during each of your turns too. That is crazy. And also yeah. notice yeah. it does not say that it does not provoke a text of opportunity though. So your rabbit may get lit up trying to, <laughs> trying to depart. No, this, this is true. Up. But, but it also reads to me and uh, y'all, y'all jump all over this because I'm terrible at, uh, 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 analyzing a rule the first time I've absorbed it. But it, it seems to me, no, you just straight up walk as normal and then additionally roll that D12 uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and just, and, you know, just sort of add it to the distance that you, that, that you want that you want to head. Yeah. It's third, uh, essentially yeah. 30 plus a D12 is what I took from it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, <coughs> Imagine that's if you make a uh, rabbit folk monk and then you just, you've got that extended speed plus <laughs> D12 Aww. on top of that. Yeah, then mm -hmm. you step of the wind and you just jump so high. Yep, yep. you're like, well, he's gone. Yes. Give me, give me that uh, mm -hmm. that Usagi energy. Like, yep. give you... me that character. Like, put him in my games. Uh, Thunderous kicks. This this really makes the Usagi Ujimbo like really, 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 really feasible now. Too. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, character. Of, of all the of all the times I don't have my Usagi hat on for a stream. Um, uh, yeah, I, I just, I, I, I think, uh, you know, Mel, Melly's right. And it's for a reason after fairies, it's, uh, can I be a rabbit then like a rabbit person? And, uh, it's, it's about dang time. Yeah. They finally gave us what we've all been asking for. Watership Fairies down. and rabbits. Your watership down. I'm just in the corner going watership down. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, I'm looking forward to the encounter of the week. We inevitably have you right about uh, just yeah. the rabbit apocalypse. Rabbit warfare. Yeah, it'll be yeah. it'll be grim. <laughs> it's, yeah, just just grim. To that grim makes me even all more afraid because you wrote the one about combat hazards, oh, and yeah, now I'm just grim. having just horrible. Watership down. Uh, I, I, yeah, but I, I'm sure when this comes out, may, maybe the uh, thought will have left my head, or maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Well, Jeremy, well. Mentioned, Jeremy mentioned monks. B. Dave, what other classes do you think kind of pair well with uh, pair well with this? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm monk. Monk is where my head was going. Also, uh, as a ranger. You know, um, uh, especially like a gloom stalker where you get that like first devastating. Uh, um, and you you uh, either gloom stalker for a ranger. Or uh, no, Gloomstalker, especially because you speed up more in the first round anyway. So you could yeah. just make like the ultimate ganker, like rush in, blast somebody, and then jump away, and they can't hit you back. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. That, that's where, if not Monk, Gloomstalker. Well, I mean, yeah. any yeah, any, Rogue, any final probably. rabbit thoughts? Oh yeah, I'm just thinking. Rogue. I kind of want to do like an illusion wizard or a bard, and do like a white rabbit, do like a magician sort of idea. Cause like why not? And maybe, maybe they they have a fairy that they pull out of a hat. Perfect. Yeah. No. I'm I'm absolutely I'm absolutely with this. I want you. I now we're gonna have we're gonna play an office game or something just so that you can do that and run that perfect round. <laughs> I, I just want to provide. It's you really just make everybody hate it and me so much. Right. Well, hey, uh, so we, we, that we, we've gotten through uh, uh, this first ch uh, chunk of Honor Arcana. Uh, that's come out about the Feywilds. Any just like overall thoughts about this stuff? You know, what you're excited about, sort of what it makes you think about, what it makes you look forward to, you know, sort of inspiration that it's kind of given you for games, that kind of thing. Jeremy. 
Um, I, I would hope that in the future we would see a Feywild version of uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, something like that, where we get a little bit more lore about the Feywild. How do these new races, the owl folk, uh, the hobgoblins of the Feywild, the rabbit folk, what are their interactions, what are their histories, and uh, where, 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 where do they live? I'd like to get a little bit more information about the Feywild, which is, has kind of been a place of make it up as you go along, at least with fifth edition, I feel. Sure. So I'd like to get a little bit more lore and then um i potentially can see myself definitely using the hobgoblins of the feywild um even in my regular games and then depending on what the lore situation is uh i might take a look at the owl folk uh fairies and and rabbit folk i'm, I'm divorcing from the lord i'm just gonna keep that watership down idea in my head <laughs> very into it uh, uh god bless you god bless your uh, world war one trench warfare with rabbit fairies <laughs> yes very into it survival Melly. horror bunnies <laughs> melly what are you what are you feeling on, on the fey wild uh i'm i'm not wanting survival horror with bunnies thank you very much i don't want it um i just i love the fey wild every single time that i run a campaign and i can put a bit of fey wild into it it's always kind of the best part of the campaign and it maybe takes over a little bit oops um so this just made me incredibly happy i cannot wait to see what this is supposed to be a part of because obviously it's Feywild related. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I'm surprised to say that the Hobgoblins have my love and adoration and I really want that. I want that to really be a part of the official. Uh, I'm super into that. For, for me, um, uh, for me, and then we'll have, uh, we'll have B-Dave uh, take us home. Uh, I, the, the Feywild is something I always forget about. Uh, it's an aspect of, of gameplay and of stories of, and of campaigns. Like I get so like caught up into like, oh, what's this warlord really want or, you know, whatever. Like I, I and that's kind of where my head lives. So even just having like the little bit of Unearthed Arcana, like just especially like the, the rules and the flavor around the hobgoblins and stuff like that kind of uh, like really kind of gets my head going. Uh, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That, this is a place you need to visit uh, uh, more often, a place you need to think about it. And like, you know, a flavor that you can start bringing in. Uh, uh, to just add like a really cool uh, layer to your games, Joe Star. So note to self, B Dave, take us home. Uh, yeah, I, I think if you'd asked me in advance out of this like lineup of characters, which one was I going to like the most, and which was I going to like the least, or at least have the be the most critical of hobgoblins winning and owl people losing is not what would have been on my bingo card. Um, <laughs> like now we have everything necessary to like live our full dark crystal fantasy though, like Gelflings versus Skeksis, you know, <laughs> like we, we have oh, it man. all now. Um, I think the last thing I would say is I think people underestimate the Feywild in that. The Feywild is really dangerous. I mean, yeah, you can, it's, it's Miyazaki realness in there, but you know, like the, the legends of the forest folk, remember for the most part, hobgoblins and pixies and fairies were not your friend. It's like, do not go in there after dark. You will not yep. come out again, you know? Yep. So um, it doesn't have to be the shadow fell to be frightening or dangerous. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's nature unleashed in there and uh, th that's a really right place for storytelling there's a, a lot of dnd that can be done outside of water deep or never winter you know and you make sure you're, you're sampling all of it and this is going to yeah, help no. people do that a lot well said I, th I think well said and and again just reinforcing that idea that like fey wild does not necessarily like mean good it means wild uh it means yeah just like primal like fey uh, elemental uh, crazy wild magic energies you know uh, I know, you know, in books I grew up with, uh, The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper and stuff like that. You know, even Merlin would be like, oh, no, no, that's a wild magic. We don't mess with that. So, like, uh, yeah, just that the dangerous idea of infusing that into your world is super, super cool uh, to me. I would like to uh, thank you all so much for talking Feywild with me. B Dave, where can people find you on the Internet? Uh, and uh, let's uh, I, I want you talking up that Black Dice Society because uh, I'm intrigued. Uh, we're vague booking about it. We're vague booking about it. You know, just put, put, put up put up a cool logo reveal thing uh, here just just a little while ago. Yeah. Well, the the announcement of what it actually is, is March twenty second. I will tell you, we're actually starting Thursday, April first at four p.m. So there you go. I know you don't know what it is yet, but that's when it's going to happen. Um, 
Yeah, uh, B. Dave Walters. I say words about things uh, at B. Dave Walters. Uh, you can find me wherever fine streaming content can be located. I'm somewhere doing something almost seven days a week. I'm going to be back playing vampire here in about an hour on uh, Bard and Barbarian. Uh, yeah, just follow me at B. Dave Walters. I don't expect you to try and keep up with all the stuff I'm doing. I barely can myself, but uh, <laughs> it's a, it's all champagne problems. It's a good time to be a geek. So, And That's looking good. forward to uh, not having rabbit war devastation at all although might having like a rabbit versus constructs war but the rabbits are going to win this time might be a game that i run yes <laughs> well look i feel like we're we're we are on the precipice of having a, a, a warforged versus a rabbit based campaign just the, the the four of us uh jeremy you down to dm this let me let me just say real quick <laughs> they, never said, they never said what destroyed sire and eberron and i think we just figured it out that's all i'm saying that's all I'm saying. Rabbits versus Warforged. That's it. There we go. We've cracked it. <laughs> Jeremy, man, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Pixel Grotto. You can also find me on D&D Beyond, where I've been writing a bunch of articles. You can check out one that went up this morning um, about uh, how to amplify your campaign and create interesting storytelling twists by giving lower level characters magic items, pretty powerful magic items, and seeing what they do with them. It's it's super, super fun. And finally, Melly, our amazing community manager, where can people find you? And the Discord, the social media, all of that stuff. And also on my Twitter at Millie DM. And come and have a great time with us. We can talk more about all of these faith folk in the Discord if you come find me there. Heck yeah. And and look, I know that the answer we see so many times in the comments when these drop on YouTube is sounds cool. I wish I had people to play with. Head to the D D Beyond Discord. There are so many cool people looking specifically for you to play a game of D D for you, and you deserve that game of D D. Uh, all that said, we will see you guys next time right here over at D&D Beyond. Thank you guys so much.